So, welcome back to this course of friction and wear of materials principles and case studies. So, in the case studies part, now today we will see the erosion wear of ultra high temperature ZRB2 based ceramic composites and their respective results. So, the outline of this present lecture is first I will introduce this ZRB2 SIC ceramic composites uh, ultra high temperature ceramic and then motivation as well as objectives of the present study and then experimental approach used for making this material as well as the erosion wear study. And mainly we will discuss the powder characteristics, the microstructures of the sintered composites, mechanical properties, erosion rate and the dominant mechanisms of metal removal. So, let us start with the ZRB2 SIC composites. These are ultra high temperature ceramic composites, particularly the ZRB2 which is zirconium diboride is a high is a material with very high melting point. You can see this is uh, more than 3200 Celsius and which has high thermal conductivity and it is very hard material it is 22 to 23 giga Pascal and a stiffer material Young's modulus is around 500 giga Pascal with a good electrical conductivity and a moderate density. The and it has excellent chemical and physical stability in various atmospheres. So, these ceramic components uh, the components made by these ZRB2 are preferred for the nose of this space shuttle. So, particularly when the space shuttle re enters into the earth's atmosphere because of the additional gravitational pull the friction induced heat will be few thousands of Celsius. So, it is a, it is actually estimated by simulation studies at least 1300 to 1500 Celsius temperature is generated at the this nose edges. So, these ceramics are generally preferred for the components in the space shuttle particularly when there, there is a chance for the high temperature generation and it has good mechanical properties as well and the ZRB2 ceramics when reinforced with silicon carbide there is an improved oxidation resistance and also the strength also improves. So, typically from 300 to 500 MPa to 800 to 1000 MPa with the addition of silicon carbide in a ZRB2 matrix. So, structural components of hypersonic vehicles or reusable launch vehicles are subjected to impact by sharp particles during their takeoff or re-entry or landing. So, that can eventually result into their erosion wear. Also, these composites can be used as wear parts or cutting tool inserts, dies in metal forming or tools in electrical discharge machining. So, so that indicates actually these composites are to be understood for their tribological behavior. While all published works on these composites are focused mainly on the processing or by on, on the oxidation resistance of this material, but tribological characterization is very very rarely reported. So, with this motivation with this motivation we try to understand the wear behavior in erosion conditions with the change in the silicon carbide composites. So, the particularly the influence of the microstructure by changing the composition and the mechanical properties again by change in composition on the erosion wear behavior of these composites is of our interest. So, this is one uh, study which shows some scratch resistance for these composites, uh, but no other important studies were done on their wear properties. So, objectives of the present study are to prepare the dense composites of ZRB2 with 10, 20 or 30 volume percent silicon carbide by spark plasma centering. To study the microstructure and estimate the hardness and indentation 
fracture toughness of the sintered composites to estimate the erosion wear behavior of the composites by particle erosion at high temperatures and to elucidate the dominant mechanisms of material removal in those selected erosion wear conditions. So, first the fabrication of these composites was done by spark plasma sintering. The powders of this zirconium diboride and the silicon carbide they were mixed in ball mill with toluene and tungsten carbide balls and then spark plasma sintered spark plasma sintered and followed by the erosion. The initial powder characteristics show that the silicon carbide is around 400 to 600 nanometers in average size whereas, ZRB2 is in 2 to 4 micrometers average size and their, their chemical characteristics also so there is no much Im impurity. So, after mixing these ZRB2 SIC composite they show uniform distribution uniform distribution. So, with this uniformly distributed particles we went to spark plasma sintering. Spark plasma sintering was done at 55 mega Pascals with a 200 degree Celsius per minute heating rate with a two stage sintering procedure 1400 Celsius for 6 minutes followed by 1600 for 2 minutes and these, these sintering cycle was selected from the previous reports. So, all these composites with 10, 20 and 30 percent silicon carbide containing ZRB2 composites after sintering they showed a decent relative density 98 percent. The microstructure of the sintered composites they show the ZRB2 and then this is silicon carbide right. So, the silicon carbide so with increase in the silicon carbide content the bonding between the ZRB2 and the silicon carbide also seems to be increased right. So, you can see very strong bonding of these uh, with the increase in the silicon carbide content. Also the line analysis show there is a ZRB2 and then the silicon carbide. So, you can see the ZRB2 and silicon carbide distribute uh, in the microstructure. The X-ray diffraction analysis of the sintered composite showed no other phase after mixing as well as after sintering. So, these are the initial powder XRD patterns of silicon carbide and ZRB2 where same ZRB2, ZRB2 SIC were found after milling. So, you can see ZRB2 and SIC. So, no much change even after the sintering. So, that means our sintering procedure was efficient to sinter these composites without producing any other phases and the mechanical properties were studied. So, this micro hardness uh, measured using a instrumented hardness measurement tester. The depth decreases with the increase in the silicon carbide content. So, the micro hardness also show there is an increase with the silicon carbide content from 18 to 23 giga Pascal increase uh, hardness for the ceramics with 10 percent silicon carbide to 30 percent silicon carbide. The elastic modulus was also increased from 280 to 398 giga Pascal and fracture toughness also Im increased from 4.2 to 5.3 ampere root meter. So, the fracture toughness improvement can also be understood by their increased crack bridging instances. So, that the transgranular fracture the crack propagates through the grain and then crack is deflected or bridged by these silicon carbide particles. So, we get an improvement in the fracture toughness. So, we use the erosion wear test setup where the silicon carbide powder used as a erodent which was mixed with the air and then the mixed and the mixture of this air and the particle 
allowed to erode the sample. And the sample can be tilted in a such a way that the erodent makes an angle with the surface of the sample. So, we studied this investigation at a fixed angle of 90 degree and a fixed temperature of 800 Celsius. Right? So, erosion test results So, erosion rate is the volumetric material removal divided by the amount of erodent used. So, you can see there is a reduction in the erosion rate observed with the increase in the silicon carbide content. The mechanisms of the material removal can be understood by studying the worn surfaces. So, all these uh, uh, material, material removal occurred by this transgranular fracture and decohesion of the ZRB2 grains and then the pull out of these silicon carbide particles. You can see there is a grain fracture and then removal right? and then there are small particles which are small silicon carbide particles they are pulled out. So, the transgranular fracture and the decohesion of ZRB2 grains are observed and pull out of these silicon carbide particles is reduced with increase in the silicon carbide content. That means, the composite having large amount of silicon carbide showed a relatively lesser pull out of the silicon carbide particles. So, lateral fracture model shows that whenever there is a sharp object sliding over on the brittle material, they generate a plastic deformation zone and then upon releasing this load that means upon moving of these particles from this contact to contact. So, there generates a lateral crack. So, median cracks and lateral cracks are generated because of this impingement and then sliding. So, this energy is consumed in making these cracks. So, the lateral fracture model show that this parameter in terms of the fracture toughness and hardness is inversely proportional to the erosion rate. So, we just uh, observed there is a linear relation with the erosion rate at that normal incidence to this erosion parameter. So, no change in the wear mechanism can be understood. Uh, th this is 1.3, this is 0.25, this is actually minus 1.3 per minus 0.25. So, as this parameter is decreased, you see the decrease in the erosion rate. right? So, this decrease in the erosion rate shows that there is no change in the wear mechanism, it is simply the lateral fracture induced wear. So, what is the difference from ZS 10 to ZS 30? It is only the extent of the fracture, nothing else, but very interestingly, the the conical crater region show also a smoother regions like particles are sliding on this surface. So, this is only possible when there is a smoother region, smoother region on the surface. So, like this. So, in addition to that EDS analysis also show that smoother region is an oxide region. right? So, 
when you have a larger amount of silicon carbide in the composite, there is more likely formation of this smoother uh, uh, region which actually protects the surface from the further material removal. So, if you have larger amount of silicon carbide, there is a chance that large amount of such a protective surface layer covering the surface. So, you can see the fracture of this grain actually is restricted when there is such a protective surface. The protective surface is rich with their oxides. So, the x-ray mapping of this eroded surface also show boron, silicon and oxygen present on the surface. So, you can see here this zirconia, zirconium is not present here. right? So, whereas the silicon and oxygen is present. So, it actually indicates this is a silicon and oxygen or because of the limitation from the EDS analysis, the boron cannot be analyzed thoroughly. So, from the literature, the we can also understand the silicon carbide has a nascent ox oxygen. So, it actually has a nascent silicon oxide or in oxidized conditions like that we used here that we used in a high temperature 800 silicon carbide converts to silicon oxide. So, in either case there is a silicon oxide availability on the surface and ZRB2 also in high temperature conditions oxidizes and then forms a ZRO2 and B2O3. B2O3 being a low melting compound, it actually is a liquid. So, this B2O3, so this boron oxide is also present and the silicon oxide is also present. So, this erosion is actually occurring on the surface with a viscous borate or silicate or borosilicate. So, the again revisiting the eroded surfaces also show so, show such borosilicate formation is actually increased with the increase in the SIC content in the composite. So, we can understand that because of the presence of such a viscous borosilicate, borosilicate the further wear is restricted. So, the presence of such a borosilicate formation is more likely when you have a larger amount of silicon carbide in the composite. So, that so that you get a larger amount of silica and which reacts with the borate and then forms a borosilicate. So, with increase in silicon carbide content in the composite, there is viscous borosilicate formation. So, we can see such a viscous phase is more available on the ZS30 than the ZS10. So, this is actually stopping further wear that means, the when the surface is protected with such a layer, the further wear is restricted. So, the conclusions from the present study are like the dense composites with the ZRB2 and 10, 20, 30 volume percent silicon carbide were prepared by spark plasma sintering. The density was more than 98 percent. The microstructures consisting strongly bonded ZRB2 grains with silicon carbide particles found for that composite with a larger amount of silicon carbide in this present investigation there is ZRB2 with 30 percent silicon carbide maximum hardness of 23 giga Pascal and a maximum fracture toughness of 5.3 MPa root meter is found for that composite again having a larger amount of silicon carbide that is in this investigation ZRB2 with 30 percent silicon carbide. When they were subjected to erosion against silicon carbide particles at high temperature of 800 Celsius revealed dominant fracture of ZRB2 grains in the ZRB2 SIC composites. When you have a viscous borosilicate phase formed on the surface, the fracture is restricted. right? So, that is how we saw when this fracture of this ZRB2 grain is actually restricted when there is a such a oxide surface is available. 
So, we can understand the wear resistance is found maximum for the composite having larger amount of silicon carbide in this present investigation it is ZRB2 with 30 percent silicon carbide. This is because of the presence of maximum extent of viscous borosilicate phase on that surface. So, this particular study showed at high temperature these composites with larger amount of silicon carbide can restrict wear. So, ZRB2 SIC composites with larger amount of SIC content can be used for such a high temperature erosion wear conditions. Thank you.